Hey, it's Mac with PriceActionTradingSystem.com, and it is Thursday. It is December 2nd. This will be our chart lesson for today, and this is going to wrap up our week. No chart lessons on Fridays. Uh, most of you know that by now. We've we've we stopped doing. I stopped doing them on Fridays long ago. So uh, I still like to mention it just because we have a lot of new people constantly coming in. But anyway, another wild and crazy day. Um, Mostly up today, closed up considerably. Uh, as expected, we, we did rally out of this oversold uh, condition. Uh, doesn't mean we don't have room for more down now. but um, So this may not be over yet, but at some point I expect we'll probably rally out of here. We'll just have to see how this kind of plays out. But you can see what it looks like on the daily chart. And this is uh, a daily chart. This is not my 2000 tick chart. And everybody always asks me what these bands are. This is our envelope strategy and so if you want to know what those bands are that's what they are so uh, they're not um, people always ask me if they're kelter bands or something of that nature no these are uh, some uh, mostly proprietary settings and so far are anyway uh, and these are based on fib settings so uh, we call this our envelope strategy so it's very helpful to, to show you when the market's oversold or overbought, and I like to use it on my daily chart. So there it is. Today, this is just an inside bar. Of course, as huge as that bar was, you wouldn't expect much more. Of course, we could have broken lower and then turned up. We'll see where we go from here, but I wanted to show you this daily chart real quick just to show you that um, we did bounce pretty quickly out of that oversold correct, uh, position right there. Generally, once you get past this this purple here or the purple up here if you get past it up on the high you're overbought and if you get past it on the lows you're oversold doesn't mean it's going to turn instantly but um i mean you can see way down here we we actually pushed through it a little bit before we rallied and then we pushed lower again before we finally came out of there so but it's just giving you a heads up that hey we're, we're getting oversold or we're getting overbought or we've got more room to go to the downside before we're oversold, or we got more room to go to the upside. It's a pretty helpful too, and it's really great for helping you to learn how to buy low and sell high. That's what the main thing I use it for on the intraday chart. But we got a long way to go, so I'm not going to take up much more time. Yesterday's video was like 30 minutes, and I, I'm not going to. Uh, that's just too long for me, and it's too long to process, and probably too long for most of y'all to sit there and watch. So I'm going to try to get it a little shorter today. But let's go over to the other. Okay, here we are at our 2000 tick chart. And you can see it was really mostly up. Uh, early on, it looked like we might have a range here. And I did use the range to f help find one of my targets and then uh, a measured leg up here versus this next measured leg up. And I, re I didn't get this on my chart early enough. Because at that time, it looked like we might be going up from here. But it turns out we had a little bit more down move to go before we turned up. So my original target that I was saying was a possibility from this point was a lot higher. It would have looked, well, shoot. No doubt I'm not going to grab the right line. Would have looked more like that. Uh, but we actually turned up from here. And you can see that was a fairly decent target. And then the measured move was probably the better target. That's this dash blue line right here. And so fairly nice move up, but the problem was there's a lot of craziness in between and you had to be really careful. And, and once we, right in here, uh, I marked a few trades up in here, but you gotta be really careful here because probably, the trend was still up, but there was really strong resistance up here at this measured move. And we pushed through it temporarily after through, right around Right real close to three o'clock and then of course sold off and uh, immediately after. But uh, yeah, I, d I originally didn't have this pinkish color uh, two-tiered channel working up. I think it's valid. It didn't help you a whole lot because we never came back to that trend line at all. However, it might have helped you up here on this midline. So, but there were other reasons to... I mean, as long as you found this little short-term range, you probably got the same setups, and there's just not many good setups in there anyway. So uh, so you really didn't need this, but I wanted to put it on there just in case somebody asked about it or just in case you saw it or wondered if it's valid. 
yes, I think it's valid. Uh, we did get an overshoot of it here, and that may be why we sold off so hard, but really it comes right back to the trend line. But we did get an overshoot there, and uh, prices looked like they were really going to stay inside this high and this low down here, but in the end we didn't. So I'm gonna take this off, like I said. I don't. I think it just gets kind of gets in the way, and we'll play these tighter ones. But I'm gonna move through these trades really quickly today. This was the day of second entries. There were so many great second entries. This this was as hard a trading day as this was. If you would have just concentrated on with trend second entries at the key entry points, it was a simple day. I mean, when you go back and look at it after the fact. Just wait on the second entries at the key entry points, and you were golden. But it got a little tougher later in the day, and there were some stretches in here where I just didn't see any trades I really liked. So uh, you'll notice that we really, from maybe 9 o'clock to, up to about 10, it got real, you know, there, there weren't a lot of trades in here. The, the market would just run one way and run out and look like it was super strong and then run out of stand. That's what happens on volatile days. You know, everybody's just buying and selling and trying to catch one of the moves and you'll get trapped real quickly if you're not careful. So but let's start here with the trades. Seven o'clock came just, you know, came as we're rebounding back up through here. And I guarantee you, some of you probably got trapped right there, taking the first entry right at the key entry point, but wait on the second entries. And you can clearly see that short term, let's just color it so it's real easy to see. That short term trend working up there is in play. And you get your first break out of it. We tried to go higher here, but failed. And that's where your, uh, your second entry you actually triggered here, but that's not a good enough signal bar. But then you get a break higher here that fails and turns down. When it breaks lower right there, go short. You might even wait and go short right here. That makes this a huge signal bar because it's 27 ticks. So really the best thing to do would be because to go short one tick below this bar, but, but you got to be careful with engulfing bars too. But the key with this one is there's plenty of room back to the EMA if you go short right there. So even if it touches and bounces, you should be long out of that trade. So I like that trade. And then just, if you just wait a few minutes later, you, you got a new swing low there. So you get a first entry, then it breaks higher and turns down. That's the second entry short. Again, I don't know if you wait on this bar. Uh, if you do, you, you might try to get a little better entry, but that's a 32 tick bar. But it's a great second entry short. And when it broke higher and failed and turned down right there, that's probably where you go short. There was actually a failure here. I didn't mark this one because it's on the other side of the EMA. So this is also a failed second entry short. So that gives you a little more leeway of going short one tick below that bar when it turn when it when this engulfing bar runs past it. And then a few minutes later we get a clear easy second entry, but again it's a 29 tick bar. But that's just that's the way it's going to be on days like this. And people ask me, well, do you change anything because of the volatility inside? And I don't change anything. I still put I still keep my scalp at four ticks, and I put my safety stop one tick above or below the signal bar. And I, I'm now I might give my runners a little more room. I did that on one trade today and ended up giving back my entire scalp and it kind of burned me. But I had a couple of them that didn't do that and I got a big runners out of them. So it paid, you know, in the end it paid off. But if you're only taking a trade or so, it could it could come back and bite you. So uh, technically, I don't change anything on the 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 way we trade in the strategy. I might just give my runners a little more room because you, as you see if you can catch the right moves you can get some nice runners on these things so just keep that in mind but you get a second entry short right there and then another first entry second entry look at that bar just go sh just go short right there Th this was the other one though uh it's a little bit congested so i don't think you want to wait till here actually you probably got stopped out you want to go short when it goes right past there where the second entry triggers and that gives you enough room to get out of there with no problem um, i mean i started I, actually i meant to make this one green i'm going to change it because it's real close but it wasn't back to the key entry point but it's a second entry short and a huge sell-off 
and what's been a really bearish market and we weren't back down to the overnight lows yet. So there's plenty of rooms even to this one and even to the overnight low. And of course we find support at the overnight lows, but once again, you get a first entry, second entry. Um, just make sure you got room to get out. If you, you, if you try to trade it below that bar, you don't have room and see what happens. It's, it, it bounces and it would have stopped you out. But now you get a triple test with another big bar and this one broke higher again and then turned down again. I don't think I would wait till down here to go short. It would have worked either way, but just go short right there. And I know a lot of times engulfing bars are, are kind of, they're not the greatest bars. They're, they're not as trustworthy because until it closes, you don't know that it's going to be a super bearish bar. But when it's, but when it, it it's this bearish and you're getting this much volatility, you're probably going to be okay. So it's just something you got to weigh out based on your trading experience. And if you're experienced enough and you understand what's going on, trade engulfing bars. If not, and they, you hadn't had much luck with them, stay away from them. So that's pretty much that e that simple. So anyway, we've had a couple of these here, just a repeat pattern. We made that high, another triple test, another big bearish bar, plenty of room now. Just go short and you see how quick and easy that was. And of course it bounces down here again. I wouldn't be trying to pick a bottom down here though, because if you're wrong, this thing could go hundred points in the other direction on you. So unfortunately there's no way to get in this move and look at that move. And that's what I'm talking about. I mean, if you catch a move like this, I mean, it's straight up for four or five bars and I'm still having some problems with my mouth. Somebody asked me they, if they seem they were having problems too. And they were thinking that it was uh, NT, but I, I don't think mine is cause I'm having some troubles elsewhere, not just an NT. So, um, you know, is it an NT problem? I don't know yet. Um, Mine started after a Windows update, so I'm going to restart my machine tonight. Uh, I've just been so busy to have and restart it. It doesn't happen enough that it's that big a deal. But when I'm trying to do the chart lesson, I tend to use these tools more, and it affects me quite a bit more. So I'm going to restart and see if that fixes it. And if it doesn't, then we'll research and find out what it is. And maybe it is NT, but I'm leaning towards Windows on my being my issue or my mouse one because I, I'm just not just limited to uh, – Ninja Trader for me, but you can see there's 20 points in 54 seconds. 54. I can remember when 20 points was a full day. <laughs> Not that long ago. I mean, that was the average movement in a day was 20 points, and here we got it in six bars in 54 seconds. I mean, that's just absolutely crazy. So, but if you catch one of those moves, you can really. I mean, that's a thousand points for one contract. So if you got a couple of runners or five runners do the math. You know, if you got five runners, that's $5,000 on one trade. But anyway, um, we run up and then we pull back first entry, second entry, right off a possible key entry point and a big uptrend. Take that trade, pull back. Now you got the trend line. You really confirmed it here. You got a trend line here, second entry long, easy trade. Comes back, first entry. There's a second entry here that you might have taken. I didn't mark it because it looks really congested. But when it tried to go lower, and plus this was the highs. And generally you want to see it test the breakout a couple of times. So once it got on through there and closed a couple of times and tested it, I liked going along. And, and obviously all the smart traders did. Look at it. Boom. It rockets up again. Then we come over here and same thing. We're just kind of working sideways again. My line's not on here, but let me put it on here so everybody can see it. But you made that low, you test it once, you test it twice, and lo and behold, look, there's a new high, first entry, second entry, boom. That one doesn't take off. It's easy scalp, though, but it doesn't take off like the others. Then you get the failed break lower. I, I usually won't mark these. I'm going to wait on a higher low, but once you get a little more experience, that's a trade you may want to take. And again, that's another, I don't know how many points that is. We'll see if I can get it to run up there. I mean, that's a 10 point move and that one took two minutes and 47 seconds, but still a nice move. 
And so now you got your break, a move to a new high, and you're working down, and you get another second entry short. Notice that new low, first entry, second entry. Nice bearish bar, boom, there it goes. There's another second entry here, but uh, that signal bar is not quite good enough to not be back to the possible trend line yet. So I didn't mark that one. And this one could have been, I drew it like this and it looks valid, but this, this might have just been, even if it's not, this is valid right here. So if you had this and you're looking at it, it looks different than mine. I'm going to go ahead and put this on there just so we're all on the same page. That's obviously a confirmed trend right there. So, and if you take that one off, now you get a break and a new low and it runs up, you get a break and a new high and then it runs down. So this one's probably correct. The other one looks correct, but on it, you, you don't really, well, you still get a break here and a new low. So it, it may still be correct. Uh, however you looked at it, it doesn't really matter. And it might even just be, it might even be that it just starts right here instead of where I had it start. And still basically get the same thing. It's not enough difference there to matter. So we'll put it back on there. You can see that. And of course we bounce here. Um, I marked this one green. Notice what you got. You got a new low. You get a first entry short. And you get a second entry short. It's not good enough to go short. But it fails pretty quickly and turns up. If it breaks above here. All these shorts are going to have to exit. And anybody that got in there, I guarantee you a lot of shorts loaded up right there. They had to have because you wouldn't have that big bearish bar if not. And this runs all their stops and then it goes right back where I thought it was going to go. And we saw a lot of that today. So um, anyway, you might take that trap. It was a nice quick move up. Uh, no more entries there. And then the bottom just falls out of it. And you don't get a setup to short this one. It's just they ran out of steam and boom. Runs down, you get a break, new low, and then it's going higher. And I don't see, uh, there is a second entry short here. I marked this green. Normally I would tell you don't fool with any inside bars, but in this volatility with a bearish bar that big after a nice move up, you're, you're probably going to get a scalp out of this thing. So you may take that. I marked it green. is probably more like that you don't really get your breaking new high but you're you know that'll happen sometimes i mean this is not a huge long move it's just a little correction in this bigger downtrend it's the first break of the trend line and you get a nice move down there's a lower high here but you don't want to enter down there so and then it bounces and you do get a pullback to the ema that goes higher but that's that's just a higher low and that's a little too far to consider that a higher low um, and then we get our first close outside right here. This is close, but that's not a convincing close. You need a convincing close outside. That's so close. It's hard to know if you got it right or not. So I, I wouldn't consider that a break. So this looks like the first break. And so, uh, you got a little congestion right in here and then you drop down correction and that's tempting right there there's another one of those really bearish bars but it's hard to know if you got a new high or not and look how we're starting to that get that roller coaster look if you took that one you got burned so simple as that uh, it is a failure but it's below the EMA so you don't want to take it long either and so off it goes. I'm, I'm guessing they probably trapped a lot of shorts here because we just came off the highs. And you can see we were really trending down. But you got your break in new low. And here, you, you it looks like the first break outside to me. So you got to be real careful with that one. Uh, if you got burned there, that's why you got to be real careful on, on traps and reversals because sometimes that's really a double trap is what that is. 
And then of course they run it up. You get a first entry, then it pulls back and you get a second entry right there. And that's another one that's real tempting, but it's right here at that original support resistance of what looked like it might be a range. So we've been testing that over and over and neither side has tended to hold yet. So I'm a little leery about going long just yet, but when it comes back with a triple test, uh, when it breaks higher right there, I like going long. And it looked like they were going to trap everybody, but it doesn't. It runs on up. The better trade is to wait just a few minutes later and you get a second entry long and look, there's another move. And if you didn't like that second entry, first entry, second entry, there's another one. Right, and all those are right off the key entry point. And lo and behold, it comes back first entry, second entry, and there's another one. And then uh, that second entry didn't go very far. And you got a higher low right there that fails. This is actually looks like a reversal here. Um, I don't like the signal bar too much. But when it breaks higher and fails and turns down, when it breaks lower there, go with it. Because it's probably going to make another leg down just like that one right there. Actually, it goes much further than that. It's another one of those huge moves when all you're really looking for is a equal leg down. And then it bounces. I was still looking for a new low. Again, maybe this one is more like this. Uh, and you do get a close outside right there and a new low. It's, it's not very convincing, but you get one and a new low and then it's headed higher and I don't see anything in here. I like there, there is a first entry, second entry reversal there, but I don't think it's worth taking because the prices are just starting to look, it's just hard to know what prices are doing here. They're not really it looked like we were about to head up again, and then suddenly we're heading down just as strong. So it's really hard to know what's going on. So I just don't like much of anything right in here because it's, look how flat it is. Look at the EMA. Uh, and then it finally does turn up. And next thing you know, you get a first entry, second entry long. So I like that one. Runs on up. Uh, I don't see any other entries up here. There is a first entry and a second entry on this engulfing bar. So if it breaks higher there, you might go long and ride it back to the EMA. But that's, that's, we almost have the measured move in place. And that's strong resistance. So I'm thinking just you better off. It's just hard to know what prices are doing. Look how flat the EMA is. Look how we're running up, down, up. It's just really hard to know right there. And then finally, we make that new high. I think we actually make a double top there. We don't quite get a new high. And it looks like we're going to finally sell off again. And now we're below the EMA. Notice that you got the new high and then a first entry and then a second entry. And look how bullish that is. If this fails and turns down, it's going to make a little run down. You don't know if it's going how far, but you, you're going to get a, You're going to at least go to these lows and get a scalp out of it. It's still a little hard to know for sure what's going on in there. I marked it green. It's not an ideal trade. Of course, we run down, get an overshoot, and we run up. But still, it, we're still just kind of chopping around. And, and by this time, I don't see anything. I mean, this is a possibility because of this break lower and being so far away from the EMA. But you're better off to wait on a higher low, and you don't get it. And then next thing you know, you, it looks like we're going higher, and then it's back down again. And it's just hard to know what's going on here. And then finally, it bounces and you could look at this as a double higher double bottom and, and a, it is a second entry. So you might ride that back to the EMA if you wanted to be brave, because if you get it right, you're probably going to get a move like this right here. And there's no worry. You're going to get a runner on this. There is a higher low here, but again, it goes into a little two bar matching high at the midline of what looks like a range. No, I'm not entering there. And then we're just kind of chopping along again. But notice what happens. You get one leg. There's actually a little two-legged move, a correction, and then another little two-legged. So you got two legs down, and you make a high or low right here. You're probably going to run back and test that high. Uh, so I like that one just because of how bullish that is, and if you got enough room there. And then it just keeps... It looked like maybe we were going to start higher again, but it doesn't. It just chops along. I'd just stay out of that until you get something for sure. And then here you get a first entry and then a second entry. But again, it's that 
engulfing bar. I don't think I would enter up here. I think you got to enter when it goes past right here. And if you, in that case, again, I probably should make it green. It's a little aggressive. But I just didn't see much in here. It's just hard to know what prices are doing. By, by this time, it looks like we've just tightened the range up into the upper half. We pushed down a little lower a couple of times. But what you probably should have done is taken this line right here. Come on here. And moved it up to there. And then, then it, it's a little clearer what's happening by the time we get to here. And that's the reason I like this trade here. You can see we bounced there once, twice, three times, four times, five times. And then we made a higher low. And we finally bounced out of there, pulled back. And this is actually a first entry short, second entry short that fails. And that's a nice bullish bar. It is right at, two, uh, right at the 230 cutoff, but it's before it. So uh, you might take that trade. And the hope is you're going to run back up to the high side again, which it does. It actually goes a lot higher than that. That would have been another nice late afternoon trade. And this is another one you might have considered. Again, you're always better to wait on the higher low like here. So, but there's another one right there that you might take because you've, you still tested it one, two, three times. And that's been pretty, con some fairly consistent support across there. All here earlier it wasn't, we were still pushing lower, but when it started holding in here and you see, eventually we went higher and that's because it was holding. So anyway, still took me 26, 27 minutes to do that. So I'm not going to beat around the bush. I'm going to wrap this one up and wrap up the week. Um, hopefully you've had some good trades and taken advantage of the volatility, but you just got to be really careful because if you get it wrong, uh, just make sure you're using your safety stops and putting them where you're supposed to, because if you don't, you could blow an account quick in this kind of market because like right here, we were mostly up and all of a sudden we're racing down and we race down however many points that is. I mean, that's a, we race straight down 36 points in eight, less than nine minutes. That's, that's costly. Very costly. If you're wrong and you're right, trying to ride something like that out, but you shouldn't be doing that anyway, but people tend to do that. Usually when somebody blows their account, they say, well, I'm going to give it a little more room. And then they're, they've given it so much room. They're married to it. Almost. They, they've got to come back or they're going to blow their account out. And, and just about time it does blow their account out or they get kicked out. It turns and goes right where they thought it was going to go. And so just don't, don't risk that. Because you'll get away with it sometimes. You'll get away with it enough that you'll probably keep trying it. And then eventually you don't get away with it. And that one trade wipes you out. So just be real careful with that. So anyway, I'm going to wrap it up. Hope you had a good week. Man, it was a fast one. But we'll be back again Monday. I'm done for today. This is Mac with PriceActionTradingSystem.com. And we'll see you next time.